Thank you, and thank you for having me here today. In some of the advertisements for the presentation here today, they mentioned that I was featured in Gasland. Gasland is a film made by Josh Fox, who lives in New York State, and it focuses on hydraulic fracturing and shale gas and the horrors that come to human health and the environment from shale gas drilling and production. Last week, Gasland was nominated for an Oscar. The national natural gas industry went berserk. They have sent huge numbers of reports to the academy that makes the decision on the Oscars, saying that all the information in the film is inaccurate and inappropriate. So no matter what you do in your daily life, they're always out there criticizing and fighting you. It's a struggle from day to day, as each of you know. So my cohorts in all this effort I'll be talking to you about today are Meredith is the executive director. And my two knights in shining armor are her sons, Paul Orr, who is a lower Mississippi River keeper, and Michael Orr. Stand up, Michael. So what you will be hearing today is the work that the four of us have been doing since that magic day, April the 20th, 2011. Can somebody come up and advance the slides, please? So this is the Deepwater Horizon, the rig that exploded and burned on April the 20th, 2010. It's 50 miles offshore from the coast of Louisiana, and 11 workers were killed. The day this happened, there were a number of workers from the Acadiana area, where I'm from, around New Iberia. And the families were extremely distraught because they knew their loved ones were on the rig. They didn't know whether they were safe or not. They didn't know if they made it off or not. So we spent the first 24 hours helping these families get through the situation. A work boat actually rescued a large number of the workers, but they were not allowed to use the satellite phone to call their loved ones. And it took them quite some time from the rig site, which again was 50 miles offshore, to make it in to a, a landing in Fushan. And until they got to Fushan, their families didn't know whether they were alive, dead, injured, and I hate to say safe, but the horrendous impact it's had on every one of those workers is just tremendous. The well, the rig burned, and on April 22nd, Earth Day, it sank into the Gulf of Mexico. Earth Day was supposed to be a really special day for us. Mary Lior, Aline, and I, and Paul and Michael had been working with John Bowermaster, and he had put together a companion book to Oceans, the Disney movie. And I had written one of the chapters. There were 30 chapters in the book, and he selected people from across the world to write chapters. And the book, Oceans, was being released on Earth Day, and it was gonna be a really special Earth Day. And in fact, it was a really horrible Earth Day. Next slide. From the day the rig exploded and burned, it started dumping Louisiana sweet crude and natural gas from the wellhead, which was 5,000 feet below the surface of the Gulf of Mexico. And the Louisiana sweet crude and natural gas flowed from that well from April the 20th through July 15, 2010. BP had goals 
Their goals were two. One, stop the flow of oil from the wellhead. And two, stop as much of that crude oil from making it to the shores and having an impact on the wetlands and beaches of the northern Gulf of Mexico. Next one, please. The crude oil actually hit the beaches nine days after the explosion. So that was their first goal that didn't work. And as you know, the one of stopping the crude didn't happen until July 15th. So they didn't meet any of their initial goals they had set forth. The crude oil migrated into the wetlands, marshes, estuaries, and beaches of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. There are two human populations that were impacted the most. And we will hear a lot more about other populations, but initially there were two. There were community members living along the coastal areas of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. And then there were the fishermen and workers who were employed by BP and BP contractors to install booms and clean up the crude oil. Both of these communities consisted of environmental justice communities, African Americans, Vietnamese, Pacific Islanders, Laotian, and Native Americans. Next one. The cleanup workers were exposed to the crude oil and dispersants on a daily and ongoing basis over a period of four to five months. A lesser number of workers are still being exposed. There are workers today out there working for BP and BP contractors trying to address the crude and the dispersants that are still in the environment and still being exposed today. The pathways of exposure are inhalation, ingestion, and skin contact. The workers were not provided with adequate and appropriate training, and they weren't provided with protective equipment. There were two dispersants that were used, 9500 and 9527 of Corexit. 1.84 million gallons of Corexit 9500 and 9527 were applied to the BP crude oil spill. 1.07 million gallons were applied to the surface on what you saw on a lot of the TV programs as the slick on the surface of the Gulf of Mexico. 771,000 gallons were applied subsurface near the wellhead. And the idea of applying it subsurface is as the crude float out of the wellhead, it was supposed to be mixed with the dispersant. And in fact, they formed two layers. You didn't have that mixing. But the interesting thing is if you believe the numbers, for every 93 gallons of crude oil that flowed out of the wellhead and was released into the environment, one gallon of dispersant was applied. 93 gallons of crude released into the environment, one gallon of dispersant released into the environment. So in addition to the crude oil spill, we had a huge, huge dispersant released into the environment. And that always has seemed to be the forgotten portion of the impacts to the environment and human health. 